Hi, I'm Rami Tamimi. In the last few videos, we've talked a lot about differential leveling and how it could be used to find elevations of various points. Today, we're going to be demonstrating profile leveling and how we can use the differential level to find the slope change in a sidewalk. Behind me here, you see a sidewalk. I want to be able to figure out the slope of the sidewalk by taking different elevation shots at different distances of the sidewalk. These various distances are called stations. And at every station, we're going to have a different elevation that we're working with. The different elevations will determine the slope of our sidewalk. Now to do this, we have three steps that we need to follow. First, we need to mark out where all of these stations are on the sidewalk. Second, we're then going to be foresighting our level at all of these stations to find the elevations of these points. And third, we're going to bring in all the data to the office and physically plot all of these points so that we can see the slope change on a graph. All right, let's get started. All right, so what we're going to need to do is measure out the length of the sidewalk. We're going to use this 200 foot tape to pull 150 feet. That's the length of the sidewalk. You could also pace out the distances, which I've explained in a previous video of mine. So you should go check that out if you haven't already. But because we're looking for a little bit more accuracy, a surveyor's tape should be just fine. We're going to pull out 150 feet to measure the sidewalk. And then we're going to subdivide the sidewalk into chunks of 25 feet. For every 25 feet, we're going to be placing a wooden stake. All right, let's do this. So what we're gonna start out by doing is driving the tape in with this chaining pin. And now we're gonna pull 200 feet. All right, and now we're at 150 feet. All right, now I'm gonna set this, all right, right on the ground like that. All right, we've measured out 150 feet. I'm gonna go ahead and place a wooden stake at every 25 feet to indicate our 25 foot stations. All right. We're good. So as you can see now, we have points at every 25 feet along this 150 foot long sidewalk. The next step is going to be to pull out our level so that we can begin our profile leveling. To learn more about leveling and how a level is used, check out my last video about field procedure in leveling. Okay, remember to step on the legs before you do any kind of leveling. Okay, yeah, that looks good. All right, to begin the process, we're gonna to need to take a benchmark just like we did last time. For this example, I'm gonna use this manhole right here as we have a known elevation on this manhole. Once we've taken the back site of this manhole, we can then begin to take the readings on all of the stations. And for the benchmark, we are reading 4.9. 4.95. All right, now we can begin to profile level our sidewalk. And we are reading 4.55, 4.55. Okay, he's gonna walk over to the next one, so I'm gonna go ahead and position myself. 4.63. 4.63 and we're getting a 4.77 all right let me go around here we'll change our position 4.89 4.89 this one is 5.01 This one looks like it's going to be 5.10 And the last one it looks like 4.98 Interesting, it went down Now just like last time, we need to take a turn point to close out our level loop 
I'm gonna be using this manhole right here and that'll be our turn point. We'll then reset our level and shoot back to our benchmark. Let's go. Okay. Let's... All right, good. All right, now we're gonna reset, back sight that last manhole we shot and then force sight our benchmark. All right, now we're gonna take a back sight on the manhole. All right, good. And now, foresight on the benchmark. Good. All right, that's it. You now have all the data you need to calculate your profile. Let's head into the office and plot out the profile of our sidewalk. Hello, and welcome to my office. I'm still in this space. Eventually, I will get a real office. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the data that we collected in the field for our profile level. Here, you see all the data that we captured. Just like before, we have our elevation on our benchmark, the backside of our benchmark, and these are all the rod shots that we took along the profile of the sidewalk. This is the foresight on the turn point, the backsight on the turn point, and the final foresight on the benchmark. If you missed the last video I made talking about how how to calculate HI elevation and adjusted elevation, go ahead and click on the link below or on the I in the right hand corner and watch that video first. I feel like it'll give you more clarity about what you're looking to do before you do the calculations here. All right, let's get started. So the first thing we wanna do is calculate our height of instrument and our elevations on all of these shots. So we're gonna start with the elevation of 766.50 and we're going to add the foresight 4.95 from our benchmark, 766.5 plus 4.95 gives us an HI of 771.45. Now the rod shots are treated exactly the same as foresights. These are going to be subtracted from the height of the instrument and they're going to give us elevations on all of the stations. So for station zero plus zero zero, we're going to take 771.45 and we're going to subtract 4.55. And the elevation at station zero plus zero zero is 766.50. Now this HI remains the same all the way down until you get to here. So we don't have to recalculate this HI over and over again. So using the same HI, 771.45, we're going to then add 4.63 and we get 766.82, 771.45. minus. 4.77 equals 766.68 minus 4.89, 766.56 minus 5.01, 766.44 minus 5.10 is 766.35. And lastly, 771.45 minus 4.98, 766.47. And now this last foresight continues to have the same HI because again, we didn't lift the instrument. It was at the same setup. So we can continue to assume that the HI is 771.45. And the only thing we need to do is now subtract the foresight from it. 771.45 minus 4.76 gives us an elevation of 766.69. Okay, now we need to calculate the new HI since we picked up the instrument and we backsighted the turn point. So 766.69, we're going to add 5.03 gives us a new HI of 771.72. And now the foresight to the benchmark. So now we're going to subtract 5.22 from this new HI. Minus 5.22 gives us 766.50. And as you can see here, the elevation here and here are the same, which means we have no error. If you have error, refer back to my last video to learn how to adjust your elevations. 
All right, now we have our elevations figured out. We know exactly where every station lies on this profile. So now we're going to graph out what our sidewalk looks like in terms of a profile elevation. You can do this on Excel, you can do this by hand. It's really easy to do on Excel. All you have to do is select the columns, one side for the stations, another side for the elevations, you go into the insert tab and select a scatter plot with smooth lines and points and it'll generate a graph for you. You can then edit the axis and the title and make it look nice and presentable. I actually did this and here's the result that I got. At the first station, we were at this elevation. We slowly started to go down an elevation as we moved further in our stationing. Once we got to a certain point though, I noticed that the elevation started to go up. If you notice in my video in the background, you can see where the elevation actually starts to go up on the grass. My only assumption is that there must be some kind of ditch in that area and whoever designed that sidewalk mimicked the ground as much as they could while trying to keep it flat as possible and you can see it here with our calculations from our level so those are the calculations for profile leveling very simple very straightforward and with that i'll see you guys next time